hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl cc and we're back at it again today with another video and in today's video guys we are going to be discussing about the crucifixion of jesus now the difference between the two religions christians believe that jesus was crucified for our sins muslims believe that jesus was not crucified rather he was replaced by another person so those are very two different um, ideas or theories about the crucifixion of Jesus. Now I've got some, I've got a few, just a few questions that um, I want to brush my knowledge on. Um, I've got it right here. So one thing that I don't understand is why will God want to crucify His own Son, right? If Jesus is god's son god's only son why would he want to crucify him it's it's shameful number one and it's quite embarrassing as well i know in the roman at the time romans used to uh, crucify people who they felt as though were not abiding to the rules of the romans so then i guess jesus was kind of like going against the rules and stuff and that's why they saw the need to crucify him but um I get that God wanted to prove a point, right? He wanted to prove a point that, you know, Jesus is dying for our sins. But I don't understand why would he want to kill his own son? To me, it just doesn't seem right for people who are ungrateful. I'm sorry, but not everybody is grateful for um, Jesus' death. Not everybody appreciates it. If it is true and if it did truly happen, not everybody is grateful for his death. You know, people still sin. And that's one thing as well. If he died for our sins, then why is there still sin around the world? Why are we sinning constantly? Each and every single day we sin. So what was the purpose of that if it was to take away our sin? I get that it was to like restore humanity and all that. But people are still sinning. We are still sinning daily. Every single person we sin there's no one person in the world that can tell me that they don't sin we all sin it's just a matter of embracing it and asking god for forgiveness sincerely but um another thing is what i don't get from the muslim perspective is why would um another person replace jesus like did the did the other person know that this was what he was doing it was made to appear that jesus was crucified isn't that God deceiving us? If that's the case, if the case is he that he was replaced, why was he replaced? Well, because Jesus, God didn't want to kill his own son, right? Or oh, no, because you guys don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. So then why was Jesus replaced? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm questioning if it was right for God to do this in the first place. Like, the whole crucifixion. Was there a need for the crucifixion? Did it really need to happen? If so, why? Why? To forgive our, to take away our sins? But yet we are still sinning, so it kind of doesn't make sense. But then again, I don't understand why Jesus was replaced. And I think is if Jesus was God in human form, why would God want to go through all that? Like, it don't make no sense. The pain. Like, why would he allow himself to be crucified? To prove a point. To take away our sins. The sins that we are still going to come and do again. Guys. Those are like my main, 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 main questions that I've been. I've just been like. It's not really making sense, is it? The whole thing. It's not. But um, yeah, let's get straight into today's video. Uh, today's video is on Hamid Didat. Who gives maybe a 30, uh, 30 reasons why um, Jesus was not crucified. So, um, yeah, let's get into it, shall we? A 
I give you a quick summary. Number one, that this crucifixion is a fiction. That it didn't happen. The way the Christians claim, those things didn't happen. Number one, he was reluctant to die. He didn't want to die. He didn't come prepared to come for any type of sacrifice. Luke chapter 22 verse 36, you'll find he's preparing for a fight. And he had he come to die, there was no need for him to tell his disciples to go and arm themselves. Number two, he beseeched God for help. Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. Number three, God heard his prayers. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Number four, an angel of God came to strengthen him. Luke chapter 22 verse 43. Pilate finds Jesus not guilty. It's good reason to keep Jesus alive. John chapter 18 verse 38. Number six, Pilate's wife shown a dream in which she was told that no harm should come to this just man. In the other words, that he should be saved alive. Matthew chapter 27 verse 19. Number seven, supposed to be on the cross for only three hours. According to the system in vogue, no man could die by crucifixion in so short a time, which means that even if he was fastened to the cross, he was alive. Number eight, the other two, his crossmates on the, on the respective crosses were alive. So Jesus too, for the same period of time, must be alive. John chapter 19 verse 32. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, saw what? That he was dead already. I says, you know, on page, page 36 and 30, 37 and 38, I give you a list of 11 different persons in the newspapers who were certified dead and they were not dead. By doctors with stethoscopes, they were pronounced dead and they were not dead, they came back to life. And there is a society in England, I have given you the picture of the society of people who have come back from the dead. Were they all resurrected? No. But they were certified dead. This man, seeing a person on the cross, he thought he was dead and he saw that he is dead already. I said, what does it mean? And saw. When doctors make mistakes in the Hrutskier hospital, where Chris Barnard operates, a white woman was put certified dead and put into the mortuary, next morning she came out alive. When you make mistakes by the day, certifying people dead when they're not dead. What this means that he was dead already. So I said, Jesus was John 1933, that there was a mistake there in seeing. Number nine, Encyclopedia Biblica under article cross, column 960 says that when the spear was thrust, Jesus was alive. We didn't write the Encyclopedia Biblica. Number 10, and when they launched him on the side with the spear, so forthwith they came out blood and water, which is a sign of life. Number 11, his legs not broken as a fulfillment of prophecy. I said, legs can be of any use only if Jesus was alive. And this is the fulfillment of prophecy, says the Christian. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Psalms chapter 24, verse 20. Number 12. There was a thunderstorm, earthquake, and darkening of the sun, all within three hours, to disperse, to disperse the sadistic mob, to enable his secret disciples to help keep him alive. Number 13, the Jews doubted his death. They suspected that he had escaped death on the cross, that he was alive. And now the next day, the next day, they go to Pilate, the chief priests and Pharisees come together into Pilate saying, Sir, we remember so and so, and we don't want to make another mistake like we had made in the first, that the last error shall be worse than the first error. What was the first error they made? You know what? They allowed the body to come down without breaking his legs. Now they want to make doubly sure, but they missed the bus. The Jews missed the bus. You know, yesterday, last night, there was in the Argus that they didn't miss the bus in Palestine. You know, within, in 24 seconds, 25 seconds, they killed three uh, Arabs and, you know, who were out to do some terrorist business, they killed three. They didn't miss the bus there. But here in the Bible, Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 to 64, they missed the bus because the next day they go along to make the sepulchre secure. Next day, after the horse has bolted, you go and lock the gate. There's something wrong with you. The Bible says, next day, Pilate, number 14, Pilate marvels to hear that Jesus was dead. He said, Pilate marveled if he were already dead. And calling to him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Mark chapter 15, verse 44. You only marvel if you know the thing that they're talking didn't happen. If you take a man to a firing squad and you put six bullets through him, and if he dies, there's nothing to marvel. But if he didn't die, you marvel. 
Now Pilate marvels that, look, no man can die within three hours. In other words, according to his experience, the man is alive. Number 15, big and roomy chamber, big roomy chamber, close at hand and big and airy for willing hands to come to the rescue. Providence was out to keep Jesus alive. Number 16, stone and winding sheets had to be removed. Only necessary if Jesus was alive. John chapter 20 verse 1. Number 17, report on the winding sheets. German scientists who carried out experiments on the shroud of Turin said that the heart of Jesus had not stopped functioning, that he was alive. Number 18, he was ever in disguise. Disguise not necessary if Jesus was resurrected. Only necessary if he was alive. John chapter 21 verse 4. Number 19, he forbade Mary Magdalene to touch him. Touch me not for this reason that it would hurt because he was alive. John chapter 20 verse 17. Number 20, not yet ascended unto my father in the language of the Jew, in the idiom of the Jew, he was saying, I am not dead yet. In other words, I am alive. John chapter 20 verse 17. Number 21. Mary Magdalene not afraid on recognizing Jesus because she had seen signs of life before. She was looking for a Jesus who was alive. John chapter 20 verse 16. Number 22. His disciples petrified on seeing Jesus in the upper room. All their knowledge about the crucifixion was from hearsay. Therefore, they could not believe that Jesus was alive. To had almal humfarlat and khaflak. They were not there. Number 23. At food again and again in his post-crucifixion appearances. Food only necessary if he was alive. Luke chapter 24 verse 43. Number 24. Never showed himself to his enemies because he had escaped death by the skin of his teeth. He was alive. Number 25 took only short trips because he was not resurrected, not spiritualized, but alive. He went to Emmaus. He went to the upper room. Back again after eight days, he only took short trips because he was not resurrected. Otherwise, he would have gone up to heaven. No sense in going and coming back up and down, up and down, not from heaven to down and up above. He is going around in and around Jerusalem all the time. Number 26, testimony of men around the tomb. They say, why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you looking for a live person among dead people in the cemetery? Luke chapter 24, verse 4 and 5. That he is not dead, but alive. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Number 27. Testimony of the angels. The angels say, the angels who had said that he was alive, that he leave, that he leave, that he is alive. I don't know what's wrong with people? What are you reading? The angels, what did they say? That he's resurrected. No. He said, that he leave, he is alive. They said, no, he is not alive, he's dead. He did not say resurrected, but the actual word uttered by the angels was alive. Luke chapter 24, verse 23. 28. Mary Magdalene testifies. They heard that he was alive and had been seen by her. They believed not. Mark 16, 11. Mary did not watch for a spook or a ghost or spirit of Jesus, but a live Jesus. What they could not believe was that the master was alive. Mark 16, 11. Number 29. Dr. Primrose, a senior anesthetist of the Royal Glasgow Infirmary, he says that the water in the blood was an account of scourging by staves and upset of the nervous vessels, that which was a sure sign that Jesus was alive. And now, the last and final one for tonight, Jesus had himself foretold that he was going to remain alive. Ma, Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, 40. He himself had told that he was not to die. That is his prophecy. Okay, guys, there was so much um, verses being thrown at me. I cannot catch all of them, but... Um, it was just a few questions that I sort of like had when I was going through it. In one of the Trinity videos, I believe perhaps one of the last ones, I was like, why did Jesus say, my Lord, my God, why have you forsaken me? Isn't that kind of Jesus feeling as if he was abandoned by God? And why would he then need to feel that way if he knew he was going to get crucified i'm wondering did jesus even know that he was getting crucified in the first place let me write that down did jesus um, 
so yeah i'm kind of like on the fence about that as well i'm like now it's going did jesus even know that he was going to get crucified or was it a thing I, I believe that he did know i believe that he did know because there were a few remarks here and there of him saying things like trying to throw hints at the disciples and stuff so i believe that he did know but um mm, but i'm not 100 percent certain but i be i do i do think that he knew that he was getting crucified but him just saying my lord my god why have you forsaken me makes me feel as if you know he 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 was a bit um disappointed a bit um shocked that he was actually getting crucified and felt abandoned by god really and also like did jesus really die in three hours i think there are some scientific um explanations to the crucifixion of jesus so i will certainly be tuning into those and see if the scientific um like play out or whatever makes sense you know because i know that they're gonna try to um basically relive the crucifixion of jesus like perhaps using a dummy who is perhaps similar to the um to the description of jesus and try to see if they killed that will it have the same effects as described in the bible um um he mentioned something i don't remember the verse or chapter because he just been literally he just threw so many so many so many so many verses at us and you know i feel like i'm gonna have to go back and pick out um my bible and you know evaluate the verses and chapters that he mentioned but um i was just wondering did jesus show himself to the disciples after his so-called sorry why jesus didn't um show himself to the enemies after his crucifixion i feel like if perhaps he did then it would have proved that yes he he is like you know what he said he was because at the end of the day it's just hearsay people saying for example mary saying that oh yeah, yeah so jesus okay but what about the enemies did they see jesus i'm just wondering like i feel like it would have made a bit more sense if his enemies saw that way they can be like oh my gosh you know shocked but um yeah i'm gonna certainly have to play this back and if i look the verses and chapters in it because i cannot just go off what he's saying i have to evaluate it and there was so much being thrown at us i really really thought it was going to be more explained but um of course it was very short so i would have to go back and look at the verses he mentioned and just understand for my own self before i make any decision on whether i believe jesus was crucified or not but thank you all so much for tuning in today i hope you guys you know seek the urge to perhaps um learn about the crucifixion as well if you do not know of it already and try to really understand and get to know the truth and yeah thank you all so much and i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys